Hello everyone. Um, so I thought I would give a tour of my travel trailer that I've been living in for the past two years. Um, it's a Grand Design 17 MKE Imagine XLS. Um, however, I've modded it heavily and so I wanted to give you a tour of the inside and the outside. As you come in, you see we have this dinette version. So this table actually drops down to form a nice uh, twin bed if you have guests. Then right here we have our Murphy size or a queen size Murphy bed. And on either side are these hanging uh, dressers with some drawers. Now to put the bed down, all you have to do, or this couch has a, a cup holder, but to put the bed down, it's pretty easy. Just need to flip that, and then there's this little latch right here. Do just drop that down, and then the bed comes down like this. Um, I've added a mattress topper to make it a little bit more comfy uh, as a full-time living arrangement. And you can see on either side of the bed there are these um, what is it cubbies with. Uh, I don't know if you can see it there, but they have a electrical power outlet and USB cords. That's on either side of the bed. On the top of the bed, we have this storage kind of shelf. And then what I just did is I turn on the lights right here. And also on each side of the bed, there's some reading light, uh, reading lights. Let me just turn it on and off like that. And then it's just pretty easy to put the bed back up, stuff it behind here. Now onto the left side of the bed, we've got uh, another hanging uh, dresser, a few more drawers, and a pretty big, um, more power outlets and a pretty big uh, drawer right here, uh, which I've actually installed a little shelf onto, uh, just so that there's more storage space. Um, these window blinds I really like because they're the nice version. They block out pretty much all light. Um, they're pretty high quality and it's pretty easy to work the windows and also just bring down the curtains like so. Uh, moving on to the main feature. Oh, let's turn on the lights. So there's a light switch right here, which we'll turn on these. Um, we have our AC unit. We have our built-in speakers. Um, the door has this screen mode where you have the main door and then to have the screen, uh, you simply uh, close it like that. I installed this handlebar to make it easier to swing in and out. But for now, let's just close the door. Um, the TV is on an articulating arm, so you can grab it and pull it out, uh, orient it whatever angle you want. Um, onto the kitchen, we have three pretty big storage drawers. Um, for this top one, I added a little latch so that when you're driving, you know, the stuff doesn't all just come out. These are pretty big as well. The sink is a pretty nice um, size and it comes with this dish drying rack so you can put stuff on top. Um, I added this dish soap and hand soap dispenser. Um, this uh, kind of faucet comes un undone out of it. Under the sink we have some more storage and I added these kind of anti-slip um, was it like layers so that the pots and pans don't slip around when you're driving? Um, paper towel roll holder. This is the main uh, control center for the RV. So you have your radio slash Bluetooth for music, and then you have your um, all of your kind kind of like awning and slide out controls, as well as your lights for interior, exterior, your water pump if you're going off the grid, your gas and electric um, water heater. And I actually installed more advanced versions of these sensors, which I'll show you in a bit. 
Um, right here to the side, I actually also installed a cellular router. So you can put your own SIM card in the bottom right there and be able to get pretty decently speed internets um, pretty much wherever you go. And the, the antenna is actually installed on the roof. So it gets a little bit more coverage than your cell phone, uh, let's say hotspot might. We've got a full size microwave here. Um, above it, a little bit more storage. We've got um, our oven fan and lights, our three burner range. And this thing has some pretty nice accent lighting as well. Um, this is uh, this works off of propane. And inside here I have a little pizza stone to help keep it um, warm and get to the right temperatures because sometimes these smaller camp ovens can be a little bit uh, not as strong. I've also got three more drawers that I usually use for silverware right here. A big more storage underneath the oven. And here we have our fuse breaker box. Let's see. Uh, I installed this. The Right here we have some power outlets and another light. I installed these little nets as like a fruit basket holder so you can put like bananas or apples or what have you in there. We've got some even more pretty plentiful storage and you can see that goes pretty much all the way back to the end of the RV. Here we have our fridge and freezer combo. Um, it's a pretty decently sized fridge and freezer for, for camping. Now this will actually work off of both gas and electric. So if you want to save your, your batteries, you can run it off of propane. Um, or if you're plugged in, you can just run it off electric, which is what I did. And now moving on to our bathroom, we have this sliding door that kind of uh, closes shut and it's held in place with the magnet. So, and then when you're on the move, it straps in just like that. Um, we have our thermostat right here, and uh, I think this is a, a gas leak detector. It's a safety um, monitor. So into the bathroom we have uh, a shower, uh, our toilet, and a little bit more storage. We have our towel rack. We have some of these um, uh, holders right here. And I installed the conditioner, body wash, shampoo dispenser as well as a low flow um, shower valve that allows you to switch between different settings. Uh, I like this shower because it's got a, a sunlight built in, which is pretty nice during the day. Um, we've got our hot, hot and cold water, and of course you can um, close it like this. And then to keep it closed, it's a little latch right here. But this, this kind of screen's not gonna get mildewy or anything, so that's why I kind of chose this model. Um, I upgraded the sink so that's a low flow uh, half a gallon a minute valve and I added a toothbrush holder and our soap pump right here. Um, the sink it came with was a little bit too hard to use so I added um, kind of this unique design to make it easier to put my hands in there as well as up my own little um, uh, stopper for the sink. Um, the storage I have here for the medicine cabinets is pretty spacious. Um, as well as our towel rack. We've got our lights, light switch right here, and our fan, um, which I actually installed to be these Max Air fan vents, which move a lot more air than what was previously installed. And to turn these on, they just have a little on switch right here. And you can control um, the intensity with a plus or minus, and they basically open and close the valves right here. Um, here I have a little clothes drying rack that I installed myself. Basically you take it, you bring it all the way over here to the other side. And then now you have somewhere that you can hang your towels out to dry or your swim trunks after the river. Um, we have some more storage right here. And I actually installed the paper towel roll, or sorry, the toilet paper roll holder right here because I thought it was like the most convenient place, otherwise you kind of have to put it in one of these other locations. Um, on the toilet, I'm actually pretty proud of this installation, is a bidet, um, where you can you know turn it on and control it right here. It's hooked right into the water, 
and then to flush the toilet, we have a little uh, foot foot pedal. Um, I actually also installed a slow closing lid on this just for convenience. And I think that's about it for the bathroom. Now, moving on to a little bit more of the living room, we have our mirror right here and some pretty spacious uh, kind of storage and cupboards. Um, you know, hold this for a second. So I'm gonna show you basically how to bring the table down. You have these latches that you open and then all you have to do is push it down and you can push it all the way down to the bottom. And then you lock it like so. And then you take these cushions and then you put it right here. And I have a, a couch so you can watch TV on. It's situated right in front of the TV. Um, also with these uh, benches, you have these. Just a nice, more convenient way to access your storage here. As well as a third more hidden storage under the back bench right here. And most days I would spend my time kind of sitting right here, doing the views, walk, working on my computer or whatever, um, plugged into the power outlets. One thing I really like about this model is there's power outlets everywhere. And I hooked up a, uh, an alternator so that we can run basically 120 hertz AC off of our uh, lithium batteries. So I'll show you that in just a moment. As you can see, it's a pretty nice modern aesthetic. Um, right, right now I have it hooked up to my Nissan Frontier, which does a job of towing it pretty well. I also added these anti-sway hitches, um, anti-sway bars to it, and these Kind of plastic totes are you bolted to the front um, just as a way that I can have some a little bit of extra storage. Our pass-through storage right here can be secured um, with or without the key so you can lock it closed or you can uh, kind of close it with these little knobs and this is where I keep kind of the garage of the RV so the it's got a light right here that you can uh, use to work in but I this is where I keep my fresh water hose, as well as my wheel chocks, my um, sewage pipe holder, uh, you know, the, the tongue uh, Lego blocks, I forget what these are called, as well as I installed this uh, broom holder and this little tool holder right here. They can put little, you know, whatever repair uh, gadgets you might need. Um, it comes with this thing right here, which you can use to access the spare tire. Now it's got these stabilizers on it, which is what you use this uh, tool for, but I just use a, a drill bit and drill, and it just it, uh, it does just fine. Uh, one thing I added to the trailer are these um, kind of mats so you can rub your feet on before you enter. Uh, it's got an awning that's, uh, I believe, 14 feet, and it expands outwards here. Um, a little handle I can close. Um, I did install a ring doorbell, so you can use that and charge it up, or see who's outside. Um, as far as features outside, you've got your uh, GFCI protected 120 hertz home outlet, you've got your cable TV, you've got your fresh water if you want to fill it up that way, and then that would go into the tank reservoir. On each tire, I've got these um, tire pressure indicator valves, so there's a little monitor that will let you know when each tire is running low. Um, it is dual axle, so uh, it's a lot more stable to tow. And these are the speakers for the outside. There's a spray port right here that you can use to shower off if you're outside. Um, it does have a walkable roof, and uh, we'll go onto the roof as part of our last part of our tour. But this is where you would um, plug into shore power or to charge the RV. And this is basically your refrigerator, kind of um, ventilation, 
Uh, I did install a backup camera right there that connects to uh, something that you've got in your truck while you're towing. Makes it a little bit easier. We've also got these security cameras that I mounted kind of around the perimeter of the trailer. Um, these are just Amazon Blink devices, so they're just kind of motion triggered and then it's kind of part of the, the Amazon package. Um, this thing is, uh, was it, four seasoned weatherproof, so it's well insulated for winter, uh, you know, anything from winter to, uh, to summer. Um, it does have a pretty good AC unit on there. Uh, here's a slide out for reference. Um, this is where the black and the gray valve, uh, the tanks are to empty. Here's a view of the side of the trailer. We've got our uh, two propane canisters out in the front, as well as an automatic tongue jack. Um, I did install this little bubble level engage just to make it easier when you're, you're pulling in. And of course, I've got some solar panels attached to the, the front and the roof. Um, I do have these side view cameras as well. Um, that can use the same kind of dashboard as the backup camera. And this is the other side of the pass-through storage, which is where you plug in your um, your water uh, into right here. Uh, and this is also where you kind of can manage the, or default, or debug the electrical kind of system. So I do have a solar panel control unit. Um, I have my power distributor. This thing has three batteries uh lithium a thousand uh, amp hour um uh, upgraded i think i forget the the brand name right now but um it's a pretty good brand um and this is the the power unit that basically converts the 12 volt line to your ac power um i, th I believe this is 3000 uh 3000 3000 watts so you can do things like power the ac and like a hair dryer if you want um and this is uh, the power hose and surge protector. These come included with the trailer. Um, what else? Oh, I did have these uh, sensors that are attached to a security ring security unit that just lets you know when any of these things kind of opens up if you want to turn on that, that security feature. Um, and now I guess let's head out to the roof of the trailer. So it is a fully walkable roof. Fully walkable roof, which I've installed a few solar panels onto. Um, the slide out is also walkable. Uh, we've got our, uh, I believe that's a, the TV antenna, our AC unit, uh, different ventilation and then that's the uh, the cellular Wi-Fi uh, antenna mounted right there this is a, a solar panel that you can that I is kind of a custom jig that I rigged up you can unfold it and splay it over the slide out for an extra I think 400 watts of solar power uh, each of these panels should be a hundred watts but typically when I'm out you know that I don't really achieve a hundred watts um, I think on a good day I get about 80 watts of solar each um, and then it kind of just goes down from there, uh, depending on the conditions, whether it's cloudy or not. Um, but yeah, that's the roof. So uh, I wanted to also take some time to cover kind of the more, um, was it modifications that I've made here? Starting with these different uh, monitors. So we have our energy monitor right here, which lets us know how, how charged our batteries are what our power draw is, what the percentages that we have left in terms of hours, battery voltage and all that. Um, this is uh, my tank monitor, so I don't really use it for the battery, but I use it for the fresh, the gray, the gray tank and the black tank percentages. Um, and they're all at zero right now because the tanks are empty. Here I have my uh, propane, gank, uh, propane tank gauges, and basically you push this little button and it'll tell you how full your tanks are. Uh, through a little sensor that's installed on them. Um, it, it might be kind of erroring out right now or can't find it, but um, next we have our 
uh, ring security system. This thing uh, will basically connect to this hub right here, which is connected to a lot of the different sensors that I have around the trailer. Um, everything from the doors right here to uh, the doorbell itself. Um, but I haven't kind of kind of used it as much as I thought I would. Um, this is an, this is the brains for the security cameras, the blink security cameras that are mounted all around the outside of the unit. Um, I did also get a question of how effective the solar panels are. Uh, let's say if you wanted to go to Tahoe for a weekend trip, like could you rely on that batteries and the solar? Um, the answer is like in truth, uh, you're gonna want to plug in or bring a generator of some sort. Um, you couldn't really run your microwave, a kitchen, and the lights and stuff uh, using just the solar. The solar is pretty much going to be for the low power things like the lights, um, the slide out, refrigerator, um, which the refrigerator actually draws a little bit of power. Uh, the TV also is, is kind of low power draw, but yeah, you're going to be want to be mindful of your, your power consumption and always have a backup. Um, I think, so this trailer has been in storage for a few months, and then when I came to go get it, the battery was topped out at 100%, so it's full. Um, and that would, I think, typically let me run the AC for a couple hours. Um, but AC is kind of one of those really kind of heavy power draw things. So, yeah, the solar is more like a, a, a supplement, like a, what is it? Like a supportive energy uh, rather than to live off of. But maybe one day when solar gets a little better. Um... Some more things, uh, you probably saw these already, but these don't come in the stock version of the trailer. Um, I kind of installed that myself. Um, let's see. I added these little films. These lights are kind of harsh if you look at them. So I added uh, kind of a little film, which you can take off if you don't like it. But for me, it provides a little bit of a softer experience for the lights. Um, this is actually not the AC unit. Uh, I don't know what kind of, I think this is more decoration, this unit in this model than anything, but the AC actually comes out of these vents right here. Um, another modification I made, which I like is the smoke alarm, which when you're cooking on this stove, the smoke alarm will always go off basically. So what I do is I just hit the little button right here to make the battery come out. And then that, you know, turns off the smoke alarm completely. Um, touching on the router a little bit, so you can also use this as like a hotspot to connect your devices together. Um, this is where basically the TV, the smart TV and the security system and a few other things connect to. Um, if you want that to be on or off, you kind of, you can just unplug the, the power source right here. Um, I also have a bunch of these command hooks kind of all around the trailer. So these are like where I keep my keys. Um, I keep like uh, a headlamp or something back here or like just some emergency kind of materials. Um, so these also come off pretty easy if you want, but they've been kind of a, uh, a help more than, more than not. Um, what else do we got? So yeah, this is definitely not um, standard on the unit. Oh, we do also have kind of storage underneath the couch. I don't know if I showed that before. Uh, one other thing I did, these blinds are kind of noisy, so I added little foam cushions um, so they don't rattle around as much and make as much noise, uh, especially when you're like on the, on, on the road and someone's in here while you're driving or something. Um, I think there's a, there's a few other kind of customizations to this, but I think I covered kind of the biggest ones. And all in all, this trailer's pretty nice uh, to live in full time. I'd say it's perfectly feasible. Just kind of plug in to uh, your power source and your water, and you're good to go. Um, I think I'll do one more silent walkthrough of the entire trailer and just put that uh, at the end or beginning or something, and then. Uh, That'll be it.
Thank you. 